Well, it has been 25 years since best-selling author Brad Meltzer's first book was published, and although he makes the life of an author look easy, releasing one hit after the next, there has been plenty of rejection along the way. However, with nearly 40 books to his name, this man cannot be stopped and will not be stopped, and we don't want it. Please give it up for New York Times best-selling author, TV host, the greatest criminal mind of our time, and New York's very own, Mr. Brad Meltzer! physically won all introductions of all time. It is? Coming from you? That means a lot. Brad. And I just said New York's very own, by the way, and we had, you were telling me your New York connection to PIX because we have done you wrong. You have not done me wrong. I am the kid in Brooklyn, New York, when I was growing up, we used to call into PIX every day when they would have, you know, the missile command come down, and I'd be like, PIX, 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 and I never won. I, and that's why when they said, can you do this interview? I'm like, I will be there no matter when, no matter what time. I don't care how long. I will never miss this interview. You can put me on national television, on, on the Today Show, on every, This is the picks, 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 picks. Mr. I waited Meltzer, 25 years listen, for doing this, I will start a campaign. We're going to bring back that picks, 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 especially for you. Because a lot of celebrities and a lot of guests we have on tell us that they used to call in. And we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rig it so you win. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> But you know what, Mr. Mel you said you said not to call you Mr. Meltzer. You know what, Brad? Brad please. So, so okay. You know what, Brad? You're already winning because you were just at the White House for Easter, weren't you? I was. We just got back, so uh, I was one of the readers for the White House Easter egg hunt, mm -hmm. and it was uh, myself and Jimmy Fallon and Sierra and okay. Russell Wilson okay. and Kristen Chenoweth, and my wife and I were like, "How did we get here?" <laughs> And the best of all, we were there with the characters from Sesame Street, what? with Maria and Alan and Elmo. So we just had the day of our lives with the president and first lady, and uh, it is not the normal day for an author, I'll tell you that. Well, well, you just say for an author, but let's just specify New York Times best-selling author. There's a difference. I'm sorry, I write stuff every day, but I am not on this level. And we're also celebrating your 25th anniversary as a published writer. Major deal. And then, what does what do you do, Brad? to celebrate 25th anniversary, release another book. That's it, yeah. So I always start each of my thrillers with one of my great fears. And the lightning rod is starts with, uh, and this is one of my favorites, is a character hands over his car keys to a valet at a fancy restaurant. And the valet takes the car keys, but instead of parking the car, hits the little GPS button on the steering wheel and says the magic words, go home. Mm. And now he's plotting a route to the guy's house and he's got his car keys, he's got the man's house keys, because those are on there too, because he's gonna rob them. This is a robbery. Oh. But as the valet breaks into the man's house, he sees there's another man waiting there with a gun, because this isn't a robbery at all, this is a trap. And when the body comes to our hero, he sees something hidden on the body no one is supposed to see. It leads to one of the government's most closely guarded secrets. I just ruined chapter one of oh. the lightning rod for you. <laughs> But that is chapter one, and, and it starts my 25th anniversary novel Then obviously meant to turn pages and, and, and get you guessing. No, you could never ruin anything for us. It was just you giving us a preview of what's to come. So it's like a special reading session. You just read chapter one to us in like a nutshell. That's right. That's All right. right. All right. So, so we know Zig and Nola are back in the book, in the lightning rod. And we, I know that since you have kids, you also write books for kids, right? You also have like, uh, you write books because what, because- I wanted to give my kids better heroes to look up to. And I wanted to give them heroes of kindness and compassion. So you see Walt Disney, Marie Curie, I am Billie Jean King. We did I am Amelia Earhart and I am Abraham Lincoln and I am Rosa Parks. And what I love is our kids are starving for heroes right now. We're all starving for heroes right now. So our two newest books are I Am Muhammad Ali and wow. I Am Malala Yousafzai. Mm -hmm. And when you read I Am Muhammad Ali, it says on the back of every book is the moral lesson. It's, they're not just history books. They're illustrated books by Chris Eliopoulos and I. And it says, I will always fight for what I believe. I want my daughter to have that lesson. I want my sons to have that lesson. That's what it says on the back of I Am Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. And on the back of I Am Abraham Lincoln, it says, I will speak my mind and speak for others. On the back of I Am Amelia Earhart, it says, I know no bounds, wow. and all of our kids need these lessons. So I love that people use our books to build libraries of real heroes for their kids, their grandkids, their nieces, and their nephews. All right, so, so, so you're saying you want our kids to have heroes. Let me tell you, like, I'm looking at a hero right now. Like, I, I, I can't even explain because you not only have the 
books for adults, you have the books for kids, you have a TV series for kids, you host two shows on the History Channel. Like, wh wh you've written comic books? Who are you? Where is your I cave? Know, trust me, I, you know, listen, I, I do also write superheroes, but we all know the most important part of the story is not Superman. The most important part of the story is Clark Kent. And why? Because we're all Clark Kent. We all know what it's like to be boring and ordinary and wish we could do something beyond ourselves. And so whether you're reading our kids' books or whether you're reading The Lightning Rod and you're you know, trying to guess the ending, um, every book has my core belief in it, which is I believe ordinary people change the world. And you'll see in this book how an ordinary person gets into a murder mystery and has to figure his way out. But it shows you the power that all of us have. All right, so, so Brad, let's just say there's a, a kid watching you right now and thinks they're ordinary and they always wanted to write a book or a comic book or any kind of genre, right? And they don't have the courage or don't know where to start. What would you say to them right now? Don't let anyone tell you no. I got 24 rejection letters on my first book. There were only 20 publishers at the time, and I got 24 rejection letters, <laughs> which means some people told me, I know you can laugh, but it is true. And it, it is true, but I said, if they don't like that book, I'm going to write another. And if they don't like that book, I'm going to write another. And I was that kid sitting in Brooklyn, New York, watching pics oh. and watching my cartoons, and here I am sitting here today. So whoever's watching out there, keep going, keep going, keep going. And we're going to keep going, and we're going to keep looking forward to many more books with you. We're going to bring Picks, Picks, Picks back for you, especially because you're a special. But in the meantime, we have your latest to read, The Lightning Rod, which is available everywhere books are sold. Uh, the pride of New York, everyone. Mr. Brad Meltzer. Woo! Thank you so much. Love you guys. You are amazing. We love you, too. And take us to the White House next time. You got it. Thank you.